So I've recently been delving into the physics research of mocha pot brewing. There have actually been a number of scholarly articles that have been put out about this, and I'm going to be talking about the results of four of those papers. Uh, the amount of brain power that has gone into addressing this issue is uh, pretty remarkable. So I am going to be dispelling two main myths of mocha pot brewing in these videos that address these papers. Myth number one, a mocha pot has to boil water to work. What? Myth number two, you should be putting cold water on your mocha pot to get the best quality coffee. Now, unfortunately, there's kind of too much information and background for me to cover all that in this video, so I've broken it into multiple videos. So if you want to skip ahead to what my evidence is for that, uh, you can check out my next video, which involves me discussing the 2008 paper by Warren King. But that paper cites an earlier paper in 2006 by Giannini, uh, which I'm going to discuss in this video. So sorry, like a little bit about like the kind of teasy title. Uh, skip ahead to the next video if you want to get the evidence for that right away. I've noticed a number of videos online purporting to explain how a mocha pot works, sometimes flashing an intimidating looking paper at the screen, but not really explaining it in depth. So we get, trust me, I read it. Something nearly all explanations take for granted is that boiling is necessity for brewing, and without steam the process cannot take place. I myself believed this until very recently, when I took a deep dive into the physics papers that have been written about this, and I'm here to give you a Cliff's Notes version of what the papers say. There seem to be four published papers directly on the topic. A 2002 paper by Varlamov and Balestrino, published in an Italian physics journal. A 2006 paper by Concetto Giannino. A 2008 paper by Warren King. And a 2009 applied thermal engineering paper from Italy by Navarini et al. The King and Giannino papers were published in the American Journal of Physics. Background physics. All the papers used Darcy's Law, which describes how a fluid flows through a porous medium like sand. It states that the flow rate increases linearly with the pressure applied and the cross-sectional area and something called the permeability, specifying how easily the porous material permits flow, but that flow rate is inversely proportional to the viscosity, which is how much resistance the liquid has to flowing in the first place. For example, water flows very easily, so it has very low viscosity, while honey or molasses resist flowing and so have very high viscosity. The extreme version of this, by the way, is an experiment with pitch that's been running since 1927 in Australia, where only eight drops have fallen in 94 years. The Giannino paper uses the reformulated version of Darcy's Law, and understanding the variables involved require diving into Giannino's source, a 2002 paper written in Italian by Varlamov and Balestrino. The Varlamov paper rearranges the flow rate per time and solves for the pressure in terms of the amount of time needed to flow across the medium, and inserts the simple relation of how pressure varies with height to include the density of the water, the mass of the brewed coffee, and the thickness of the coffee puck, and chooses a permeability of 10 to the negative 13 square meters, matching that of what Google Translate tells me is coarse sand soil. Italians help me. Giannino does a simple exercise of heating water and measuring the temperature change over time to determine that his stove had a power of 80 watts. To determine the pressure needed to brew, he then measured the temperatures of both the escape valve and the spout over time. The spout is always a bit cooler than the valve until the coffee flows and they equalize in temperature. He notices that the temperature the coffee pours at is about one degree higher than boiling in the previous experiment with an open top. He concludes that the difference in temperature is because the vapor pressure difference at those two temps is exactly enough to push the coffee grinds through, which he calculates to be 3.2 kilopascals, based on the known vapor pressure of water at different temps. To determine coffee permeability, he repeats the experiment with no coffee in it and measures the time for the water to pass through the empty filter. He takes the relevant measurements with the calipers and calculates the permeability of the setup with the coffee in the filter, subtracts the permeability he gets from the empty filter, and takes the difference to determine the permeability of the coffee itself as 2.3 times 10 to the negative 12 square meters, which is interestingly about 20 times larger than the number chosen by the Italian paper, which used coarse sand. So the actual flow through the coffee grinds, he's saying, is about 20 times larger than what Varlamov and Balestrino used, though it was within the range of what they stated the values typically were for small grain soils. So Giannino's paper was a great use of a physics model, which used a few temperature and size measurements to obtain values for the parameters used. Giannino then also calculates the efficiency using the model of a heat engine in physics, though I'll spare you the details here except to add that Giannino explicitly models this using the steam that came out of the boiled water, 
and assumes the coffee puck acts like a simple release valve once the steam hits the threshold pressure and simply maintains constant pressure throughout the expansion, with more boiled water vapor making up the difference in volume as the water comes out the top. I must confess, this was exactly my model for how a mocha pot worked as well. And then Warren King's paper came along and undermined nearly all of that. Thank you to Professor Giannino for fact-checking this video. Thanks for watching. Remember Tuesday, coffee snobby.